Hey there everybody, welcome back to Alive, where we are entering the third and final disc of the game. Disc 2 certainly ended with a whole lot of information and... I guess plot twist where Atsuko found her long lost mother in uh, Yoko Ono there. And Yoko proceeded to then get herself shot by a number of clones or possibly robots. There were certainly little bits of information regarding clones brought up, so that definitely might explain some of these assassins being brought after us, or I guess some deep, hidden away secrets going on. But, well, for right now, I think it's time we head into the final disc, even though I don't think we'll be uh, finishing up the game today. And let's see where the plot, plot takes us. Just gonna pop in disk trace or son is it son no it might be oh yeah let's uh let's pop the disk in now i know last time around we did pick up a uh, one of those cards that all the other assassins had, but we uh, still are not going to be able to look at it just yet. Atsuko is too busy doing the work of a mortician and trying to, to beauty up the... Uh, I suppose cover up the many bullet holes that her mom managed to get. I do agree with the, uh, the translator in the YouTube comments. She probably could have done something besides just protect... Atsuko from the bullets, I probably could have moved them away from all the gunfire, but I don't know. She probably uh, felt she was doing the, the right thing with, with martyrdom. And I mean, we, we do get to survive with Akira and his very small nipples, so it's always a plus. somber moment all around. Kind of a bummer to not have your mom for so long and then finally meet her and she just kind of explodes in uh, blood. Yeah, now we finally do get a chance to look closer at the information of uh, the evil butler. Or, I don't know if he was a butler. He seemed like the, the, the help of the house. So he also from the A area, much like the other assassins, Hir Hiroki, Hiroki. Um, let's see what his data says. Yeah, it's a lot like the other people. Uh, they might be dead or have died back in 2003. And apparently these are all like I thought before, kind of generalized stats about uh, their their general physical nature. Uh, this guy apparently excelled in the thoughts or in the in the mental area of uh, his uh, his breakdown. You can see that his IQ is slightly higher, and he does have A's in all of those categories except for one of them. And you will see that he does have C's, and and I'm guessing the the physical stats. So that might be why he was, you know, trying to, you know, use trickery and being conniving rather than just, you know, attacking us directly. So there is that. And I think we can go ahead and use our cipher here. Get his secret data as long as well as the final little bit of original data. And this, uh, it's, it's a bit hard to tell. I'm thinking that that CR10 number is kind of like a, a version number. Because you can tell underneath it there's a date. And it looks like there were, well, as we already know, there were a bunch of versions made of him. 
So that's like four through seven. And they were all made within the same week. And I think the percentage underneath it is maybe compatibility or I guess proficiency. Or I don't know how, how well they, they were made. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the, uh, the final ringleader was probably 47. And we do have the secret data. Not, you know, obviously not much we can get from this, but if it's to match up with any of the other secret data, it's pretty much just outlining, hey, you're going to go kill these people. Let's see, there's the D. So I'm assuming he might have been going after the head of the D district. Could very well be the case. I'm not sure what that string is there. That four F43. I'm sure it's important though. But since we did unlock the data three for him, it also unlocked for the, all the other people. Though Yeah, they aren't as interesting. Yeah, she only had two copies made it looks like and the apartment assassin yeah, he only had two made as well I'm also kind of assuming that the thing above is maybe the name they went by like in in the real world rather than a model number and finally go T Pretty large change of text there. So he had a few versions made. And even this final line of just January 1st, 2003. No additional information there. But yeah, his records go all the way back to 88. Wow. He, uh, he has been around for a while. And I'm wanting to say that I think 1988 was also maybe one of the dates brought up in one of those cloning articles, so... Maybe these guys have been cloned. I don't know. But yeah, I think that's a good amount of information. And there was that additional card that uh, one gentleman gave the Yoko. It seemed like he was helping her out. And that... I, I don't know what that facial expression is. Emptiness? I guess would be the closest thing I could equate to it. So, Yurata Ryu? He's definitely got a much more impressive gold-plated uh, personal data icon, so there's that. And let's see if we can cipher any more information out of his card. And so we did unlock secret data one. Yeah, it's just this one page, 126. I wonder what we can do to access Secret Data 2 for him. I don't know. But maybe we could go find him and get some more answers at the uh, security department? Akira, you know Ryo? You know the security officer? Hmm. So, Kira seems to have some knowledge about the security center. And I guess that is where we're going to head next. Yeah. It's uh, fitting in for Yoko.
Also, we really didn't get a, a very close look at this very bizarre PC setup last time around, but for some reason it's got a typewriter, which I want to say is really cool, but it's also a bit strange. I'm thinking that she's not able to find the name because it was spelled with a U. Yet again, a uh, very strange setup of monitors. I don't think we've been fully introduced to whoever this onlooker is. I kinda I thought initially it might have been that guy in the security station, but yeah, he was definitely in a much better lit location, I'd say. And pretty much like every other, you know, antagonist we've run into so far, he's very much into the, the earrings. Feeling super confident now, so that's always a plus. But we can't rest for too long because the Volkswagen patrol is showing up. Assuming he's saying come out with your hands up, we will shoot you. Hey, I know that kid. Yeah, I guess it's good that they don't teach the, the Volkswagen Patrol how to shoot very well. Because otherwise we'd be in danger. Also, I was wrong. That, that poor CGI representation of the outside. There was indeed a, a statue of just a guy sitting in a chair out there. I, I don't know where this mansion in Japan is that just has a guy chilling in a chair. Man, yeah, this was the kid we ran into down at the uh, flea market who tried to rob us, I think. Seen him in a while, but it is nice of him to, I guess, lead us to safety. I mean, part of me wants to say, maybe don't trust the kid that did try to rob us before and seemingly has been following us around, but you can't kiss a gift kid in the mouth. Uh, I don't know. He did lead us to an American muscle car. So that's weird. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a combination of weird and badass. Also, I, I do like the idea that they brought up the drone so long ago to kind of explain how we're still being watched via cameras, but it is a bit surprising that we haven't seen drones or seen them used in any kind of, I guess, offensive manner ever. Oh yeah, Akira, Daijobu. Atsuko, also Daijobu. Just where could we be heading next? Well, we are given this emergency message. I believe it's trying to say, be on the lookout for the woman in the blood-covered dress. 
that's wielding a gun and shooting people at random. But yeah, we do have that security card, and there was some mention of a security station, but... Yeah, we're, I don't think we're heading to the headquarters. Oh, so I guess Kira was telling us to head to this security warehouse? And it's probably for the best, because... Yeah, this place is just filled to the brim with deagles. And I mean, the dolphin has been suiting us pretty good throughout the game, but... It certainly uh, would behoove us to, to get an upgrade, I guess. Something that's happened in District D, I think. I'm assuming this Kappa that's parading around as a human being is uh, maybe been killed. It's also mentioned at Club Pink, so he might have been going there. Like I, apparently one of the other uh, district heads was a sex crazed maniac, and he uh, apparently killed or oversexed there or something. It was a strange subplot. So there's building in District A that was made in 2005. It's gonna have something to do with uh, this Kappa, so let's keep that all in mind. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's see if we can get an upgrade. Guns and knives and. Lots of goodies in here. Hey! I know that guy. He's like, I have still brought my lovely <coughs> zebra suit. Sorry, I died there for a second. So, it was kind of mentioned in one of the previous, like, news little snippets that we got, but, yeah, his body was not found next to the exploded truck, so, yeah, he, he managed to survive all this time, and I guess he's decided that he's not aiming to kill us now, so. It's good. Hmm. Hmm. So, whoever that mysterious figure is, seems to have control over uh, this assassin, or maybe all the assassins. I guess he's been the one who's actually been aiming for us this entire time. And I can only assume that Goatee here decided to turn over a new leaf and... Yeah, he had to, he had to pay for it. Who's that? Oh man, that is a that is a Terminator walk. That is a killer robot murder walk right there. So yeah, apparently there was more than four assassins. This one seems to be uh, incredibly imposing because he has the look of a man who's constipated. Horribly, horribly constipated. Also, he's got a flamethrower.
honestly not the most useful of weapons, even though, you know, people did want to argue with me about the whole sniper dart gun. I did kind of see, see their, their thought process there, but not so much with the flamethrower. I mean, imagine if he just had bullets. He'd probably have already shot us multiple times. Yeah, sadly, our, our deagle upgrade did not work against this much more buff assassin. I didn't work either. I mean, I do commend her for just kicking the crap out of this guy's nutsack. Good fight choreography. Or interpretive dance. I am impressed though that they really never tried to pull punches with the fact that you're playing a, a female protagonist. I mean, everybody is just treating her like the hero. It's really brutal sometimes. impressed with these graphics. I mean, especially with how they're kind of integrated into the uh, the FMV. Also, um, I think what, what you know, some people out there might know is uh, the reason you don't see flamethrowers a lot in normal, you know, warfare is because I think a part of, they just kind of consider it as a part of the Geneva Convention that they were a bit too brutal and horrible and, uh, yeah, I think it. I think it's a pretty horrible fucking way to die. Yeah, it's time for our suiting up for battle montage. We have plenty of gabombs and plenty of pistols, machine guns, all all types of goodies that we are strapping ourselves down with. And probably the police are saying to themselves, hey, look out, that woman that was just packing the one gun is now packing all the guns. So we got a new piece of news. A couple pieces, actually. So it looks like JBS is putting all the, uh, the deaths together and thinking that they might be connected to... Some mysterious force behind the scenes. Definitely will uh, agree with that. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't seem coincidental the fact that 17 years ago a bunch of people died and now, you know, 17 years later, that same relative group of people are now turning up dead as well. Let's see here. Let's see, 34 year old university. It's a bit hard to tell, but I think that's maybe a cell. I don't know. Maybe this guy has something to do with cloning. Let's see, we've got 7285. That's kind of close to when Goatee died, or maybe he got 
resurrected or cloned. Hmm. Yeah. Probably something useful in there. And with all those new items, we can uh, look at all those. I mean, we even managed to pick up a fucking rocket launcher somewhere in there. That's good. But yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff is as you would expect. Just, you know, grenades, knives, machine guns. Should be pretty, uh, pretty useful since, yeah, we're going to be running into probably one of the, one of the harder parts of the game. Alright, so that message was actually to say, hey, we know exactly where she is. Let's all go over there at once. Mash the button. Yeah, some of these shooting sections with the machine gun are not the most precise thing in the world and oh yeah who is ready for another fucking chase sequence that's actually even harder than the previous one i know i am spoiler alert though i uh i did play this ahead of time and uh i'm cheating say it makes things any easier because you can still fuck up like plenty of times because it's just <laughs> but they did put a lot of effort into the stunt work in this section I will commend them for that So having watched so many Sentai shows and Power Ranger shows back in the day, like all these explosions look very, very familiar to what they would use in those types of uh, types of shows. finally fuck up. Doing pretty good though. Yeah, I will say the last chase I had to do, um, I probably edited it out 10 minutes of footage. So hopefully I won't have to edit out that much this time around, but we'll see. Yeah, they get you for those last grenade. Because so far you've had to press left. Yeah. Right. Oops. That's kind of leave into question how large this police force is to 
after this one person. Because we've blown up a lot of people. And we've shot even more than that. There we go. Oh man, that is not uh, boding well. Because even after that intense chase sequence... Oh man, the next part... The next part is uh, somehow worse. Thankfully we can take a bit of a reprieve to see all the latest news from the, the developing world. So this woman uh, is not apparently a gothic Lolita. She apparently was a right-hand confidant to, I think, someone in the B District. And she was given ownership of some hotels, and also she might have connections with Club Pink, where, you know, medical experiments were going on. So she is uh, probably a important figure. Let me see the police probably raiding or interacting with Club Pink. And I think that's the chief of police. And he's probably thinking about all these sweet ass weapons or I'm gonna assume considering the raid we just did on their on the storehouse there, it's probably saying all the uh, sweet ass implements of death we're we're wielding. Um, so police chief, Twin Towers, turns into five people equals one mystery man. I get it. And uh, really I can get from any of that, which is fine. And we have this lovely gentleman here. He's from the E district. I'm assuming he's the head of that, and more than likely he's dead. Because look at him. He's just cruising to die. But yeah, now comes another massive hurdle. Because after all that nonsense we just did, police have finally decided to, you know, stop chasing us around and just open fire on us. And there are a lot of them. The thing is, like, the rhythm for this is, like, there there is a rhythm. Oof. It's just the rhythm is weird and off-putting. Like, you can't just mash the, the fire button, because that won't work. You have to wait for it to go red. And you kind of see there... It, slow down a little bit because that wants to fuck with you and make you fail When she starts do wielding like this, the rhythm is even more specific. And then, yeah, the game just decides to hit. So if you if you don't get it on the initial try, you're not gonna get it. All right, it's gotta be this time.
Oh, fuck. But hey, it's okay. I get to get out my last fucking little bit of aggression. Discretion, do you really want to do this? Yeah, it's it's nice to see that while Itsuko does have to kill people, she doesn't want to. She does she's just been kinda of thrust into this and She's been trying to do the best she fucking can, but it's kinda of really difficult to do that. Finally made our way to security headquarters. Final location of the game and a good stopping point, I'll say. It looks like maybe Akira is trying to communicate with us, saying, "Hey, did you fucking murder all those policemen? That was fucking brutal." Yeah, let's check the last little bit. Actually, it also strikes me. Oh, there's a lovely chief of police. The prom picture of the head of the security department, I guess. But yeah, I, I totally just remembered that we did not look at... Uh, that last uh, little information card. Yeah, for that last assassin. Definitely want to do that. So, his information, or his death, is pretty much the same as everybody else. Ryuji Otomo. Let's see, he is buff. But smart. So he was pretty well rounded, I guess. Minus his inability to walk straight. Uh oh. Somehow his third original data unlocked the secret data too for the head of security's card. Before we check on that, though, we got to use a cipher get a little bit more information. Yeah, just more communication regarding who to kill, where to kill. Model numbers, I think, for some of the other assassins, it looks like. E-District... Hmm... I think that's where the university was, right? Hmm. Yeah, so we unlock secret data 2 for this lovely gentleman. Let's see what that has for us. Secret data 2. Analysis and earring? Hmm. So there is something being stored in the earrings. And when they come together, I guess it unlocks that information. I guess that does explain why so many people were just out to get it. They weren't just a, a fashion symbol. Why does this guy want it? 
head of security. Well, we will have to find out next time. Because that should be the end of the game. Hopefully you will join me then. Hopefully you all you all are very excited to see where this ends up. And, well, hopefully I'll see you there. <laughs>